you're going to come back in and you're going to use something called a stain to do your painting. Um, and then we're going to just dip it in a clear glaze. So that way it, well, okay. Question, Susanna, for you. Do you want the surface to be um, glossy or do you want your surface to be more matte? Uh, I kind of wanted it glossy. Glossy? Okay. Then we're going to dip it in a clear glaze. Because if you wanted it to be more matte, I would just have you do the clear glaze on the inside um, so it would hold the water. And then we would leave the outside unglazed so it would have that sort of rough texture. Um, but if you want glossy, we can just dunk the whole thing. Easy peasy. Okay. And if you want to make pasta, you know those like... Um, I don't have one, but I don't think they're too hard to get a hold of. You know those like Play-Doh, like plastic little like you put the 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 Play-Doh in the little hole and then you push down and you get like spaghetti noodles out. Or even like, oh, there's this candy. It's like a Mexican candy and it's like um, got like a, like a spicy tamarind paste on the inside and you just like squeeze down the little guy and it comes out like his hair. Um, okay. That would be a great way to make clay noodles without having to, I don't know, roll out each individual one. <laughs> um, they would look more uniform. But uh, for noodles, you could just like, actually, you could probably make them the same way you make normal pasta, which is to roll it out thin, fold it over, and then just uh, slice through. Have you ever made pasta? No, I haven't. Oh, it's oh, it's so much fun. You need to do it. Real pasta is better than store pasta. Any any gosh darn day. Um, I'll just I'll do it real fast because we're still kind of waiting on these mushrooms to set up. So making pasta, making noodles is super easy. You would just do your volcano of flour, and then you put your eggs in the middle, and then you just blend them all together till they're sort of like a like a sugar cookie dough consistency. But the way they that most people cut noodles when they make homemade noodles, unless they've got a, like a fancy noodle machine, which I wish I had a fancy noodle machine, but I do not. Got to work with what you got. You just roll it out super duper thin. And then you fold it over once. And then you fold it over twice that way. And the third time this way. So you've got this sort of like a funny sandwich, right? And obviously these would be a lot thinner. And then you cut through your wonky ends, right? And then you cut. And then obviously if it hadn't have, it was, wasn't clay, it wouldn't compress together, but you would unfold it and then you would have a thick chewy noodle. And that's a sort of fun way to do it. A lot of cooking techniques cool. work well, work well in the, uh, the clay world. Okay. Let's do, let's go ahead and jump on to how to carve back to make thin and elegant mushrooms. Alrighty, let me just adjust the camera real fast. If I can. Okay, cool. That looks good. Can y'all see that mushroom sculpture pretty well? Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, so like you can see, I've sort of built these up real thick. Um, and that's so they can hold the structural weight. 
But what we're going to do now is we're going to take a lot of that off. We're going to just remove a great deal. So in your brain, sort of get like a general idea of like that attenuated sort of like Herbie mushroom shape and start just carving back. Now be mindful of how much you take off because if you take off too much, you're going to cut right into it. But maybe that's what you want. Could you like do uh, slabs to like create the, the like stocks of it, or like is it one solid? I thing? did coils, so I rolled out oh, okay. coils, and honestly, that's going to be the best way. If you're working like thin and tall, coils is going to be your best friend. Okay. I wish, oh, okay, so there's this really cool thing happening and I wish I could give you a better view of it. So right here where I've carved away, um, so clay is dirt and dirt is really good at hiding uh, like microorganisms. So clay is really good at molding and we actually secretly want our clay to mold. I know that sounds like crazy, um, but mold makes your clay more plastic. It gives it a little more like wiggle room to be crazy, but also sometimes it really creates these kind of um, psychedelic uh, trippy colors, but they don't stay. They never stay. And you just say, man, I wish I could keep this because this would look perfect on my mushroom sculpture here. But alas, it will fire out. So if you cut into your big bag of clay and you see that like maybe the center is either a little like darker or lighter than the outside, that's because the outside is, it has been exposed to air, but also because the inside is a little moldy. Just a little background information for you. So I'm kind of like working between my thinner, thinner tool and my thicker tool here. And the reason I'm doing that is just because when I get into these like really tight angles that I've built for myself, I don't want to like accidentally cut off the other side when I'm not meaning to. So adjust your tool based on what you need it to do. Um, sometimes we get into the habit of using one tool for everything. I'm so guilty of this. I've got one really good trimming tool, but sometimes that's not the tool I need and it's not going to help me. And I'm so stuck on just using this one tool that I end up messing myself up. And taking off material at this state, at this level of dryness is nothing but a good idea. Just because first of all, you're making it lighter. Um, you're giving it more room to dry out faster. And lastly, when we go to fire it, so what happens in the firing process is that all that internal water, that chemical water boils out. If your piece is too thick, there is not enough space for that chemical water to evaporate out, to condensate. So what ends up happening is sometimes you boil right through your piece and it'll crack in half. And there goes all your hard work. Which is 
also like not quite as important with sculpture, I will say. And the reason because of that is because you can just glue sculpture. If your piece doesn't need to be food safe or watertight, you can just go ahead and paint it once it's bisqued. So you could probably just glue it back together. So thinking about how you're gonna finish these things is, is important. Now for our pieces, we definitely need to glaze fire at least the inside. So that way, if you go to use it like a vase, that extra water will um, not get soaked up into your piece. And I've decided for the stalks, I sort of like this um, grainy, like, I don't know if you can see it, this sort of like wood texture. I think that's really attractive. So I think I'm gonna try to just do that all the way through. Now, Emerald, a big thing for you to remember when you build yours, this base needs to be as wide as what you've got up top. So that way that weight will count counterbalance itself. Right. Okay. Um, I, I've also got little rocks down here. Um, these are just little pinch pot rocks and they are hollow and basically they've created an air pocket like that fortune cookie I built earlier. So when I pull this off of my mold, I'm going to go back behind and poke, po poke like just a needle hole through the back where these rocks are at. So that way they've got like a space to sort of let that air out. Because if I leave these on, they probably won't blow up, but they will crack. Okay. And also, I don't know if you can see this little thing right here. This is not part of the sculpture. So I've sort of got my mo my capped mushroom leaning ever so slightly. If I do anything that's like fighting gravity when it's still wet, I'm gonna give it like, this is just a support. I'm gonna pull this off right now. Um, and that's because I've got this big branched part that's sort of leaning over. And I just kept that on until it was dry enough to hold its own weight. So that way I could get like that sort of like, I don't know, like flowing organic feel that you get with some mushrooms. Have you thought about, okay, so I don't know anything about your mushrooms um, or how they're like built, but I do know a lot of mushrooms have gills and I think that'll be like a good thing to add in. Have you thought about how you're going to sort of sculpt those at all? Um, I think they're like on the underside. Well, I mean, obviously, like down here, they like flare out weird. Yeah, since they like flare out weird, like um, uh, uh, I didn't really know how. Like, I guess I was just gonna like instead of adding them on, just like carve it. I felt like yeah. that would be the best. I think so. I think that'll be a good plan. And I really think paying, giving those gills like that specific attention could be like a good call. Um, I'm gonna grab something real fast because uh, your mushrooms are blue, aren't they? Or are they yellow? They're orange. They're orange, oh gosh darn it. I, in my brain I was like, they're blue. This glaze will be great. Um, we've got orange, but I've also got like a really pretty blue that might like just be absolutely gorgeous with what you're doing. One, one of your one of your sketches was blue. I swear, I swear, I swear. Um, yeah, it was, um, I had the orange ones that I want to do. I had one where I, I don't have the sketches with me or like what the names were, but it was like they were like really small blue ones that were yeah. like kind of clustered together. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I'm not. Like I, on I, a, I knew I wasn't crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got this beautiful. It's called Panama Blue, and it's you can't really see it quite as well in the camera, but it's got like white speckles on the inside. So if you're using vMix, you can use this glaze. Um, which could be a really nice touch. I've also got a couple other things. We've got just straight orange, which you can definitely just do straight orange. And that's where we sort of, the same question I asked Susanna, have you thought